shall we finish this up? So, uh, <laughs> oh, it's weird. It's been a long day. So we're finishing this up. Uh, this is part four, at least crap out of the way. Um, part four of the SCX-102 raw builders kit. We are so close. We just have to attach the axles, the drive shafts, the shocks, and the bumpers and body posts. And I think that's it. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to jump into it. Same kind of video, minimal editing, no fancy tricks, me rambling for who knows how long. Um, so hopefully you enjoy it again. If you don't, I would not recommend this video. You can just turn it off now. It's fine. It's okay. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. So we have the front axle to attach. Let's flip that over, grab the front axle, like a so, and um, now, now i got to find all my screws and stuff that I need. Um, okay, we need one of those, and we need two of those. Okay, off to a good start. We need a set screw, and we need a nylon lock nut. There we go. All right, that was pretty easy. So first up, let's do our, I don't know. Let's do the pan hard mount, I guess, why not? It's right here, it's in front of me. It's easy enough. Okay, we're gonna use this guy and we need, uh, what do we need? Wait, did it not tell us to attach the pan hard? Interesting, all right. So let's do the uh, the bottom links. Let's slot those in. And all right, there we go. And on the bottom, we are going to use 17. So the two short screws for the bottom. Good. Okay. And the other one. I really like, so uh, like I said in one of my other videos, or, or many of my videos, I've mentioned this a few times, um, I got, I was really, really involved in the RC crawling scene for a while, and then I got out of it, right? And so when I came back, it was, uh, it was pretty cool to see, wait a minute, do I have the wrong? No, okay. I thought I had the wrong uh, rod end for a second. I'm still not convinced I don't. Is that? I'm pretty sure. Hang on, I gotta go back. Do I have the wrong rod end? Front axle. Okay. No, I think that's right. Left upper. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Looks weird. Um, right, so when I got out of RC, like the original SCX-10, I think, had just come out. But, um, you know, things like these steel frame rails and stuff, they were not commonplace. People were still very much running the, you know, the TVP, the twin vertical plate style stuff. Um, and this stuff was just coming out. You know, we were just starting to see... Uh, some more scale tires on the market, but it, it was still a pretty pretty far cry from what we have now And so when I got back into RC like I was blown away by um, Like actual licensed off-road tires like that's incredible like I don't know if, pe if people realize that but having you know Nitto or IROC or whatever, you know having actual licensed um, tires is incredible. I think it's an amazing um, an amazing thing that we have now. I would have, you know, we would have killed back in the day to have that. You know, we may do with the old Proline Moabs and, you know, whatever else we could get our hands on. Okay, so links are on. Drive shaft. Drive shaft is next. Uh, yeah, so anyways, it's, 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 it's pretty remarkable what is available to us now. And uh, definitely don't try to take that for advantage. I don't, I'm saying I don't try to take that for advantage. Is that right? 
that feels like it's okay. Yeah, we're we're good, I think. Okay, yeah, hey, we're good. We're good, right? So that goes in the rear. Okay, so now I just need this guy and some thread lock. So I'm kind of at a loss for this one. I have no idea what I want this truck to be. I have, um, there are like a few builds I have in mind, but nothing, nothing right now is speaking to me, if that makes sense. Like, you know, I, I find pictures of really cool off-road rigs. Mm, I don't, mm, yeah, I guess that works. It just feels like that drive shaft is uh, not, Might bind a little bit under extreme. Hmm. Interesting. Anyways, um, I have a few ideas in mind for what I'd like to see this thing become, but nothing that like really excites me, if that makes sense. Nothing that I'm like, ooh, yeah, I, that's what I gotta do. That's what I want. Uh, AX117 is the short one. Yes, so I need four of these guys. So I need your help. You know, I I, I don't know what to do with this thing. Um, so if you have any good ideas, anything that you really want to see built, like comment and let me know. Just because I'm kind of, like I said, at a loss. I'm kind of like, I don't know. Um, I think like a 2021 Bronco would be really cool. A... Um, I think a hard body would be cool. Um, recently, my buddies and I have discovered the site, you know, and there's just tons of uh, files for hard bodies you can print. So I'm like, I don't know, would it be cool to do a hard body build, 3D print a body and, and build one? Um, that's kind of what I have with this off to the side here, I have this Willy's body that my buddy 3D printed for me. And this, uh, he, he printed for this, he printed this for me a little while ago and I've put it together, I've done an initial sanding. Um, I'm gonna do the resin trick where you like paint resin onto the body and then cure it, sand that, and then hopefully get it like really smooth. But that one is still has a ways to go. Um, so I'm just kind of like, should I do another 3D printed body, like a modern style? You know, I, I really like the look of the Tacomas or the Forerunners. Um, we found a classic Bronco, which I think would be really cool to do. But I'm just kind of at a loss. I don't know, I've been thinking about it a lot lately and I'm just like, ah, I just don't know. Nothing really, nothing really calling out to me at the moment. So I just, um, you know, I went to go purchase some parts today and I was looking at them and ultimately decided not to because I didn't want to spend the money on something that I would later regret or not, maybe not regret, but change my mind, you know, like, oh, actually I want to build something else with it. Okay, now that the shocks are in. Yeah, so what I'm looking at on, and right here on the drive shaft is this uh, splined section and when it when the suspension compresses it There's not much room for that Drive shaft to compress as well. I think it, I mean, it's fine. I'm sure it's fine, but um, Oh, I see so you're supposed to put the You're supposed to put the servo horn on first and then yeah, okay. Well, too bad, instructions. I don't have a servo horn right now, so we... So you're supposed to put the servo horn on for the servo and then do the uh, pan hard bar, but seeing as I don't have a servo horn for this right now, we're just going straight to the pan hard. But there you go. There we have the front suspension. It's a little squeaky, but once the air bubbles work out, it's pretty smooth actually. I still don't love the shocks. I don't love the plastic shocks, but you know, oh, just hit my light. Uh, I think it's going to work pretty well. So let's move on to the rear, I'm guessing, or are we going to do the body posts? 
uh, rear. Okay, flip that back over and that goes like that. And now we need some more screws. So we need some long ones and we need a couple short ones. And there we have, okay, where are the long ones? That's a long one. Okay, there's one long one. Oh, and we need a set screw. And the other long one just so happens to be, uh, who knows? Oh, right here. All right, so we got two short ones, two long ones, and a set screw. So let's do the uh, uh, top links first. Sure, why not? Top links get the long one, I bet, yeah. Did it happen to you? Kind of going back to my, what I was just talking about. Where you like want to build something, you just don't know what. Like I really want to build another RC, but I'm just like, I don't know what it is. And I'm, I'm kind of at this point where I want to build something that would look good on a YouTube video. So I'm leaning towards I'm leaning towards a more like everyday kind of daily driver kind of truck. Um, like I love my Cherokee that's right here that I've done a few videos now, but it's definitely more of like, you know, if that were a real rig, it would be a pretty serious off-road rig, you know, not road, um, what's the word? Not road worthy, not um, street legal. It would not be street legal in, in any in any state. You know, there's no way. It's am I supposed to do 17? Huh. Um, so yeah, so I'm thinking of doing. I think my next build, I'd like to do something that's a little bit more like a daily driver kind of rig. Um, okay, now the drive shaft, and I need that little plastic shroud. There it is. Oh, pin almost fell out. So that's what I was thinking, like a new, you know, 2021 Bronco, I think would be pretty cool. Build that up to look like a, you know, just kind of a, a built Bronco, nothing crazy. You know, something you'd see driving down the road. You know, not like super jacked up with enormous tires. You know, minimal suspension. Not minimal, but like a realistic level of suspension and flex. Uh, probably 4.2 tires, maybe 4-inch four, four tires. Kind of whatever whatever would look best you know i think a 4.2 would like add up to or, or scale up to like a 37 which is kind of big on the new bronco but i think it could work um see so yeah, i've been thinking about that um i also think doing a uh now I need two 15 millimeters. There we go, I need four of those guys. I think doing a Comanche would be a, a lot of fun. You don't see too many Comanche builds. Um, and I'm just kind of tired of seeing, and again, nothing wrong with it. You know, people build what they like. I've just seen so many Hiluxes and Tacomas. And, you know, especially like the RC four wheel drive bodies. You know, you see those everywhere. So I'm like, man, what, oh shoot, was I supposed to do, I just realized the shocks are color coded and I was not paying attention to that. Okay, rear are supposed to be white and, okay, that one is white, so this one is incorrect. Um, and yellow goes in the, f wait, what did I just say? Okay. White goes in the rear, which is what you are. So you go in the rear. Uh, well, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I am so distracted. But yeah, I think a Comanche build would be cool, just because you don't see too many of them. Um, I wouldn't mind doing another Daily Driver Cherokee, but I feel like, have I done too many Cherokees? <laughs> Like, I have done a lot. You know, I've got this one, of course. Well, this is the only Cherokee I have right now. But uh, way back in the day, I built a, uh, a, a true one-tenth scale Cherokee. And that rig was so cool. It was... Um, 
It was exactly what I wanted. If I had a Cherokee of my own, it was exactly the way I would have built it. Um, and it used, this was way back before like the uh, Cherokee hard body that's available now. So the only Cherokee body that was available, this was even before the Proline or uh, Axial body came out. It was a handmade uh, fiberglass body that someone made in Germany and it cost me like $300. And I paid that money as soon as it became available. I paid him so fast and it came with so many good details. Um, I'll throw a, uh, I'll throw a, a picture up of it here just so you can see what it looked like. And remember, this is like back in the day before anything was really available. It used a uh, MRC shocks, low C MRC uh, axles and shocks. It had leaf springs, leaf springs in the rear. It had that, I don't know what it's called, but it's, you have the shock body and then the spring that you normally see in a lot of off-road vehicles um, instead of like the coilover design. Um, it had a panhard in the front, four link in the rear. No, two links because it had the leaf springs. Um, man, that thing was so cool. I loved it. It was so fun to drive because it was so top heavy. Um, because the body was fiberglass and expensive, I was so afraid to damage it. But what that meant that was that while I was driving it, I would drive it like you drive a real vehicle. I was afraid to bash it into the rocks. I was afraid to tip over. Um, and ultimately it just made for like a more realistic, more fun experience. Um, all told, I think I had about $1,200 into that thing by the time it was done. All right. I think we're good. I think... I think we're... Uh, I think we are good to go. Am I... Hang on a sec. It almost looks like the rear shocks are... No, that's the way they're supposed to go. It's almost, it's almost like they're rubbing a little bit. But... No, I guess not. It's just close. Okay, but yeah, there we go. Um, we got the we got the front and we got the rear all set. So next up, uh, what do we do? We got that. We got that. Okay, we got the receiver cover, which I don't have a receiver in there, so I'm not going to do that. Bumpers. All right, bumpers. So, anyways, I I've thought about doing. Uh, another daily driver type Cherokee, which if you've seen the JCR um, Cherokee, I think it is the coolest thing. <laughs> I'm obsessed with that thing. I would love to do it. Um, unfortunately, like part of the cool part is the hood that it uses, um, and I that's not available in RC. So I'd have to like 3D model and print that, and I am not that level of 3D of modeler. I can do some bare bones stuff, but nothing to that extent. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm, I just worry that I do too many Cherokees because I did that. I did that one way back when. I have this Exo cage now. Um, if you go back into my earlier videos from like two years ago, a year and a half ago, I talked about doing a Cherokee tube buggy, which I still want to do. I'm just not very good with tube work, tube work, and that is kind of a daunting task. Um, okay, ba 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 ba. What's left? Body posts. Okay. Um, oh look, there's even a setting for the uh, 2000 Jeep Cherokee body. <laughs> We're not gonna do that though. So uh, interesting. What are those little doohickeys for? Yeah, body posts. So anyways, like I said, I'm just like, is that too many Cherokees? I really like them. The Cherokee is my favorite vehicle, if you haven't been able to tell already. I just, I love how boxy and square and unassuming they are. There's nothing fancy about them. I don't want to say there's nothing great about them. Um, I mean, they're iconic and they are just, it was my first vehicle I bought was a, was a Jeep Cherokee. It was a 99, I believe, or 2000. I think it was a 99. Um, okay, let's get these body posts clipped off. 
So I, I feel, I don't know, is it too cliche for me to do another Cherokee? Um, they're just neat. I like them. So uh, let's see, what do we need? What do we need here? Number two, we need a number two, right? Number four, number two. Um, doesn't matter. Actually, I think I might just leave these off. Because it, like, I'm not. Those rear shocks do not feel very good. That one feels okay. That one. That one doesn't feel great. Whatever. Front suspension feels good. Um, I think I'm going to call it there. Unless, are these a locking hub? Yes. Okay. So we're going to put the hubs on. Um. Yeah, Cherokees. Anyways, Cherokee. Blah, 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 Cherokee. I really like the Comanche. Um, I think that one's pretty cool, too. I mean, it's basically a Cherokee truck version, you know? Of course I would like it. Nothing nothing surprising there. Um, I just want to do something that feels a bit more unique, hasn't been done to death, and, and I don't know, Cherokees are certainly not unique. I mean, that's for sure. Um... Oh, those are some itty bitty, itty bitty set screws. So uh, we're not going to put thread lock on these. If anybody's watching and you're like, I forgot the thread lock. I'm not putting thread lock on. Thread lock for me, especially on like the, the hubs, is like the, like getting ready to drive, you know. Um, and this is far from that. So I'm just going to put them on because there is a chance I take the axles apart or something. And so... I always do, before I get ready to drive something, interesting, I always do a uh, final, final thread lock pass. There is a set screw screwed into that one. All right, we're going to put that one off to the side for now. So with this hex, there's like... So there's a little area for a set screw. Hang on, we're gonna have to like, let me do this. Whoop. And see if it'll focus. So it's got this little hole for a set screw, right? But the set screw is already in there, but it's in backwards. So I can't get the, the, the hex driver in there to get it out. Can I? You go in at like an extreme angle. Thanks, Axial. Jeez, can't get that one. Um, before I do that, am I supposed to put... Yes, I knew it! Okay, this is a step I almost always forget on these axles. There are these little plastic spacers, and you need them for your rear axle. In between the, uh, the wheel hub and the bearing of the axle, you gotta put this little plastic spacer in. And I almost always forget to do that. So, right, earlier conversation. I'm just tangent city over here. 2021 Bronco would be cool. I like Proline's new body. I thought about getting it, turning this into a 2021 Bronco. I think that'd be neat. Um, I've got that Willys project I need to work on, but that one still needs a lot of work. So I feel like that's more of a long-term project right now. Um, the Bronco or, or whatever I do would end up being the easiest, of course. Because I could just slap a body on real quick and wheels and tires and electronics and basically call it done. I mean, I wouldn't. There's still much more I'd want to do to it. Front and rear bumpers, a tire carrier, all that jazz. Okay, we're going to sort of throw these wheel nuts on just so I don't lose them. I do have extras, but I'd rather... I'd rather not lose these if I can avoid it. All right. So now all that's left is this stupid one where the set screw, like, how does that even happen? Can I, like, bang it out? Yeah, it doesn't feel like it. Well, how does that even, I wonder, can I, like, Take a set screw off of another one. Let's try something. Can I thread it into this one and like push? 
Oh, it's working. No, it just stripped it out. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, that just stripped it out. Okay, well, that didn't work. So, I mean, in the end of the day, it's fine. I can still use it. It just won't clamp down like it's supposed to, which is kind of obnoxious. But again, I might switch to a different kind of hub. I don't know. I do have some other ones laying around. So not the end of the world. Just, again, a minor inconvenience. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this just, just yet. I have some ideas. Nothing set in stone. Nothing that sounds exciting. Um, yeah, maybe I can't. Oh, boy, this sets... It's, like, screwed in just enough that I can't get it out. It's not screwed in all the way, so I can't slide the hex over the axle. Like, how does that even happen? In the bag, I guess, it must have, like, just perfectly fallen into that hole. Maybe if I had, like, a rounded bit, I could get it. Now I'm just chewing that set screw up. Is it coming out? It might be coming out. Or maybe I'm just making it up. Maybe I'm just wishful thinking over here. I'm fine if I destroy the set screw, because those are easy to replace. I probably have one. Yeah, come on, 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 come on. Okay, it's definitely coming out. What a weird, I've never had this problem before. This is strange. If I had like a tiny, like a little Allen key, the L wrench, I could probably use that, just like cut the end off. Okay, maybe now I can, I wonder if now I can like, I don't think this is gonna work, but let's try. No, that didn't work. Well, 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 this might just be a junk hex. <laughs> Strange, I've never had that problem before. That's a new one for me. Okay, but we are gonna screw, so these little set screws are used for the body post, so we're gonna screw these in again, just so we don't lose them. Um, I don't like body posts. I much prefer magnets or something, um, but you never know. So I might as well just throw those in there for now, and then we'll see what happens. And then I think, I think we can call this one done for now. Might have to replace that hex. Oops, where's this one going? Oh, over there. Um, but for now, until I do figure out what it is I wanna do with this thing, uh, I think we can call it done. Yeah, so that's a bit of a bit of a shorter video. The last few have been rather long. Um, yeah, so let me know if you like watching these. Great. Um, I'm always looking for critique or uh, suggestions for improving. You know, I'm always looking for people's suggestions or opinions. Um, this is a pretty easy kit to build. Uh, I'm waiting, I'm at 29 minutes and 35 seconds, and I know at 30, 30 minutes it's gonna stop recording. So I'm just like waiting for it. But anyways, this is a pretty easy kit to build. I really enjoyed it, for the most part. Um, it went together, yeah, it, was, it went together pretty easily. The SMT-10 was a little bit more complicated and confusing. This one is much more sim simple, much less complicated. Um, and there it is, there's the 30 minutes. Well, we know how long this video is. But if you have any ideas of, of what you would like to see in a video, again, I'm, I'm coming at this like this project, I want to be like a good video RC. Like what would look good on camera? What would be fun to watch? If you have a suggestion, an idea, if there's a truck that you love and you would love to see an RC version of it, you know, comment, let me know, post a link or, or tell me how to find it or describe it. Um, I just don't know what to do with this. Uh, I have some ideas, nothing set in stone, like I've been saying. And so I, I, I need some help. But anyways, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for following along. If you have, 
Um, if this is something you want to see me do more of, just let me know. If you never want to see this ever again, let me know. Um, this was just an experiment. But we will see you all in another video. Uh, thank you for your support. Um, I'm doing this. I'm having a f ton of fun. I hope you do too. We're going to clean up a little bit. Um, yeah, so, well, yeah. Have a good night, afternoon, morning. It's night where I am. Um, it's not even that cold. I'm just I'm wearing the beanie and the hoodie because it's comfy. Um, yeah, anyways, I'm going to stop rambling and let you go. See ya.